In this video, I'm going to discuss why you need to understand the two-way connection between muscle growth and the gut microbiome to maintain a healthy body and prevent chronic disease. Hello, my name is Dr. Igi Suse and I'm a functional or integrative medical doctor. Welcome to my channel Gut Health for Life where I'll be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome. What you will learn from this video is how crucial regular exercise is for the health of the microbiome. I'll explain ways the gut microbiome responds to exercise and how the microbiome can increase or decrease muscle mass. There's one type of exercise that is detrimental to health and I will discuss that towards the end of the video. We all know a healthy microbiome is important for good health. We also know the benefits of regular exercise. But how does the microbiome influence muscle growth and how does exercise influence the microbiome? I have patients trying very hard to bulk up on protein supplements and high-protein diets. On the other hand, I have elderly patients losing muscle despite eating a healthy diet. The common underlying problem is the health of the microbiome, as I'll explain in this video. One caveat is that this information is just that, information. I'm only discussing the benefits of exercise, not what or how much exercise you should do. It is not medical advice. You must talk to us, your suitably qualified health practitioner, for your specific needs for an exercise program. How bad is physical inactivity? Physical inactivity increases the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, colon cancer, postmenopausal breast cancer, and dementia. The risk of increasing all these diseases can be reduced, and one way is improving the health of the gut microbiome by including exercise. Studies have shown that exercise training independent of diet changes the composition and improves how the gut microbiome functions. One important finding is that exercise increases the all-important short-chain fatty acids called butyrate, which is produced by the friendly bacteria when they digest fiber. In my video on fiber, linked below, I discuss short-chain fatty acids in more depth. Butyrate is a very important chemical with many different benefits, but I'll only mention what is relevant to our discussion here. Butyrate is fuel for the cells of the large bowel. 70% of the fuel for this, these cells that, come, that line our gut comes from butyrate. Butyrate also regulates the genes involved in cell turnover in the gut lining and so plays an important role in strengthening the intestinal barrier. Good gut barrier function is fundamental to achieving and maintaining good health. So if there's not enough butyrate, the cells of the large bowel don't have enough fuel to function. The growth of the cells is stunted and get damaged, resulting in leaky gut. Studies have shown that three hours of exercise a week increase the levels of butyrate-producing bacteria. Now here's a very important piece of information for those who want to increase muscle mass. In other words, increase muscle bulk. Butyrate increases skeletal muscle mass. The bad news is that stopping regular exercises reverses these improvement. Obviously, the diet must contain the foods that can be converted to butyrate, as explained in my video on fiber. Butyrate improves muscle mass, and exercising improves butyrate production by the friendly gut microbiome. So very beneficial feedback loop between muscle and the microbiome. Muscle, when exercised, releases a number of substances that not only induce the breakdown of glucose, but also the breakdown of fat to create energy. Other substances released by the muscle induce muscle growth and breakdown of visceral or abdominal fat. So exercise induces substances released by the muscle that in turn makes the muscle grow whilst breaking down abdominal fat. The next big benefit of exercise is not commonly known. Regular exercise increases the secretion of bile acids. Why is this important? First, some basic information about bile. Bile is produced in the liver from cholesterol. Bile's function is to break down fat that comes in food before the digestive system enzymes go to work. This is a relatively common knowledge. The next part is not commonly known. Bile is a powerful regulator of the microbiome. A reduction or absence of bile acids results in significant alterations in the microbiome, that is dysbiosis, which is an unhealthy balance of the microbiome. Exercise increases the production of bile that has a benefit in maintaining a healthy microbiome. Oh, one point to clarify. 
Some patients, some people who have their gallbladder removed, think they don't produce bile. This is not true. As I've said before, bile is produced by the liver. The gallbladder is a storage organ, and when removed, bile flows directly into the bowel. So exercise improves bile production, and as it is produced from cholesterol, may reduce cholesterol levels. Another positive for people who have unhealthy cholesterol levels. Now, what are the effects of having an unhealthy balance of the microbiome in the context of exercise and muscle uh, and building muscle? For a start, the unhealthy bacteria can reduce the availability of dietary protein to the body, particularly of some amino acids like tryptophan that are involved in the building of muscle protein. Gut bacteria are also involved in making many vitamins, including folate, vitamin B12, B2, also called riboflavin, that exert a beneficial and muscle building effects ranging from taking part in amino acid synthesis and neutralizing the effects of oxidative stress during exercise. So eating high protein diets alone may not be enough to bulk up. You need a healthy microbiome as well. So the fiber types are important as discussed in the fiber video. I now want to discuss disease in relation to exercise. I mentioned bowel cancer before. Studies have shown that physically active people have a 25% reduced risk for bowel cancer compared to people who are sedentary. What about inflammatory bowel disease that includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis? These people have been shown to have reduced bacteria that produce butyrate and immune substances that reduce inflammation and prevent autoimmune disease compared with healthy people. So they're missing or have reduced levels of bacteria that are protective of these diseases. So are there any negative consequences of exercise? This is what I mentioned at the start of the video. The negative effect of endurance high intensity exercise, especially if not proportional to training level, may be a huge stressor on the body. It can cause profound and rapid changes in the microbiome. It can also lead to in increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut, allowing toxic bacterial products entering the circulation and activate general inflammation. But in healthy people who regularly perform physical activity, a balance is reached between gut microbiome and the skeletal muscle function with exercise promoting healthy microbiome and the microbiome favoring muscle health. The balance is disrupted by sedentary or inactive lifestyle or excessive exercise resulting in dysbiosis. Other factors like acute illness can be associated with the reduced muscle mass and function. Dysbiosis, we know, can result in a leaky gut and inflammation with decreased muscle growth and decreased nutrient availability. So the message for improving the microbiome and, and avoiding or reducing risk of chronic disease, as mentioned, is to eat a healthy diet comprising 30 different vegetables and to undertake three hours of exercise per week into the long term to ensure a long and healthy life. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to your comments below and please subscribe as there are many more videos on gut health coming. Thank you for watching.